Okay. Good evening. Uh, this is the start of our Zoning and Design Review Board on August 14th, 2012. And um, I'd like to have a call to order. Um, we could have a roll call now. <laughs> Vice Chair Anglin. Present. Member Scoggin. Present. Member Gates. Present. Let the record reflect that Chair James and Member Durham are absent. So we do have a uh, majority or a quorum. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I, uh, adoption of the agenda. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, moving on to approval of the minutes from May 8th. Are there any uh, additions or corrections for that? Approval of the minutes for July 10th. Oh, right. That's right. Yeah. Because I'm looking at the old one. <laughs> approval of the minutes for July 10th. Um, are there any additions or corrections? I have none. none. So um, that's that's approved. And now we have five minutes of um, any public comment of anything that we don't have on our agenda for this evening. Looks like there's no one here really to make any comments. I can see people there have an agenda this evening. <laughs> okay, um, the consent agenda. No items. None. Okay. So let's begin the public hearing. The first um, item is the sign permit for Heston. And if you could give us a report. Sure. Um, this is the proposed sign package for Heston Vineyards. And it is the building that was approved under master development plan in 2012 and is um, soon to be under construction. The two signs um, that are proposed are both for Heston. The first is an approximately two square foot sign and it will feature eight inch tall pillowed stone letters for Heston and it will be epoxy to the south side of the stucco wing wall at the front of the building. And this um, piece of stonework is an example of what the, the letters will be. So that's, that's what pillowed stone is? Yes. I'll pass it around. Um, and the other sign is an approximately six and a half square foot sign that will feature Heston Vineyards in a circular formation and with a logo at the center and it will be laser cut into a Corten steel plate that will be mounted near the building entry and uh, it will be backlit from behind with a light fixture that will face downward and be illuminated through um, the laser cut letters. And the applicant just submitted this um, photo simulation that clearly shows the two proposed signs. And both signs meet the town's requirements for sign area, location, lighting, and the design criteria as well. The one issue noted in the staff report is that um, both signs um, provide signage for Heston, Heston Vineyards, and the uh, retail space is both a wine tasting room and a um, cookware showroom and so the cookware is not separately identified and staff's perspective is that it's important to identify both uses to be within the spirit of the retail diversity ordinance so that people know and understand there's a second um, shopping opportunity however that's not a strict requirement of our code and so it does meet the requirement before you um, we're mentioning that um, because in the future we'd hope to see more signage for the secondary retail element. But as I mentioned, it does meet the town's um, requirements and criteria, and we are recommending approval. And the applicant is here as well to give a presentation and answer any questions. Okay. Um, does anyone have any questions of staff right now? No. Uh, um, I just have a question um, in this because our, our ordinance does require a retail component to that, but, but a lot of the other kind of um, wineries and places like that don't have any kind of identification for that. Is this something that we'd want to encourage in the future so that like, right. revolve? We discussed it at staff level today of introducing a concept into the sign ordinance amendment that would require um, signage for both uses. Uh, so that will be presented to the town council in September. Um, it's not before you tonight. It's not um, a current requirement. There is one tasting room, Bovine, that identifies their secondary retail, and it's aficionado for the cigar element, um, but no other 
uh, tasting room separately signs the. How, how do they sign that uh, in the window or? How? It's on the window. Do you do you have a, an idea of how this could be incorporated into this project? I'm just you know it's an idea. Um, well, we would like an applicant to come up with perhaps a second name that would identify the business. Not always do they have that. Um, in this case, it's um, Heston Vineyards. Perhaps Heston Cookware would be something that could identify that. Uh, but they indicate that Heston designates both the wine tasting and the cookware so that it is signing both of them. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? I guess the question I would have is, are you with the, the ordinance or the, the idea of having them signed both in the future? Is that a retroactive to any current? No, it won't be retroactive unless they come in for an amendment of their um, sign package, at which time we could require it, if it becomes part of the town's policy. Okay. okay. And, and did I understand that you would you wanted to make a presentation? Just a couple of words. Okay, that would be great. Thank you. The uh, cookware products... Oh, could you just identify yourself? I'm Faro Esalat, the architect. Thank you. The um, cookware products that they uh, produce are actually uh, five or six lines different lines, so it becomes difficult to try and incorporate all of these into a single sign. And since they're actually going to be producing cookware under the heading of Heston, um, we chose to make the larger sign, which is the one which is on that uh, wing wall, the concrete wall with that stone finish on it, uh, to simply say Heston and not say Heston Vineyards. The one that is the smaller one, the perforated metal by the door, that specifically says Heston Vineyards. But the larger sign encompasses both the cookware and the wine tasting. Um, so just, with just a clarification as why there's only that one. <clears throat> Otherwise, um, I think it, both the signs are self-explanatory. We try to keep them um, kind of uh, low-key um, as far as the uh, building is concerned. We have nothing on the top. They really design more for pedestrian uh, walk-bys rather than cars. So there's nothing large applied to the building itself. Um, and um, they're uh, lit very modestly. Uh, the one by the door is lit from behind the perforated sign. And the other sign, which is Heston, actually just has a well light from the ground that um, shines on the surface of the stone. Uh, and the sample that you have uh, in front of you is actually the square block of split face limestone that's underneath the sign. And then the letters, just to clarify that, are actually going to be made out of smooth stone. And that's why it becomes then pillared. Oh, so the split face is, is on the larger surface? Correct. Is about five feet by five feet is it's quite clear on the rendering um, where it falls. Um, and, and so there are, okay, and so the stone for the Heston is, is going to be this darker color or the? No, it, it's, it's, that, it's that one, yes, the one you just pointed to. Yes. That one, yes. In, in that color? It, it's in that stone, yeah which is close to the stucco color of the building. Okay, so it's just going to be a tone on tone? Exactly. Okay. Um, I had a, uh, a couple of other questions. One is, what do you see, uh, can you see any of the product through the window, the plate glass window? In fact, the wine tasting area is, is set way back in the um, retail area, and all the products are set in the front on so, movable uh, stands. Right. And in that uh, barrel-shaped window, which is on the right-hand side, there is a continuous shelf there inside that the products are displayed on. So as soon as you approach the building, there's this shelf, which is probably about 30 feet long, which has all the cookware on it. And, and then this window here, you'll, you'll also be able to see yes, cookware. Yes, the, the right behind that, there. Freestanding um, 
stands that will display, and those are all shown on the plans which were approved before. Right, okay. Well, I think that would work. Uh, one, one last question. I, d I don't see any signage at all from the north. Uh, this is all directed to the south. Reason is that the way the building sits and the gates, uh, real estate building sits in front of it. You really can't see this building coming down uh, from north to south. So it's mostly visible only as you're coming up from south to north. And that's why th that wing wall that sticks out and has Heston written on it uh, is intended to catch that traffic. From the other side, you really can't see it. And the numbers um, are actually facing Washington right. so that anybody looking for the numbers would find that. So you'd really have to walk past that wing wall to, and look back to get any idea of what the name of the... Correct. Yeah. The Otherwise, we would have to put something way up on top of the building. And even so, still, I think the um, Gates building would obscure it. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Any, other, any other questions? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, any other questions from the uh, anybody that would like to address this from the public? If not, we'll close the public hearing or the public part of this, and we'll discuss it among ourselves. Anyone else? Okay, thank you. So, anybody want to start? I'll let you guys go since my first. Okay, day. sure. Take the lead from you, Bob. Yeah, do you? Rob. Well, I, I think um, I, I don't see any problems with it. Um, the this the stone that we were talking about this limestone all 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 surfaces will be faced in other words they'll be smoothly finished right okay and then it goes on the the split face of the the rest of the wall there or the stucco and then that stone is split face below that okay and uh you know i i like this this um identification with the laser cut through here my only, my only concern is that there's nothing to identify the building as you come from the north. That would be my only comment, that you really do have to get past the Gates building um, and substantially past the wing wall that identifies the street number um, to, to really know what the building is. I mean, you'll be able to see in the window, obviously. Um, even the wing wall, it really doesn't have any back, or the, the uh, steel plate sign doesn't really have any backside to it where you'd have any identification. So, I mean, there might be an opportunity to do that there, but, you know, it, it does meet the requirements of the code, and uh, so I'm fine with it as presented um, with my comments, but I wouldn't really push that. The other part of it is I think that it is a good idea in the future to... Um, have some identification of what the products are going to be that are sold there. It doesn't have to be on the same level of importance as the primary use there, um, but I think that that would be a good idea. I, th I like the idea that the secondary products, the retail products, are actually displayed in the, the storefront in the front, so I think that'll work well. I'm with you, Rob, on, on most of that. I'm a little, um, I wish there's a little more emphasis on the, what it's all about, what the retail component is all about, a little more marketing interest to try to draw some people in there and see really what's going on and generate some enthusiasm, which I think is kind of the idea behind a lot of the retail piece of our ordinances. I'd hate to see it kind of drift off in the future and surreptitiously become used for something else such as office space or non-retail space or something and without any real identifier as to its purpose, who would know? So that's my only concern is I just wish there was a little more enthusiasm for the retail component. Thank you. Yeah, I think I, I tend to agree with both the gentlemen up here. Um, the 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 staff has put together a report that, you know, doesn't seem like there's anything egregious about the signage and, and the building has, you know, I guess nice architecture and it's going to be a it's going to be a new building in town and I think it'll get people's attention as they're walking by or driving by for sure. Um, I think the the retail component, if, if that is um, something that is important to the town and and if we're concerned that business might lapse or, or we won't have as, as effective of a, a retail outlet from 
from um, a business operation standpoint, I would, that would be my concern. But I think that's also part of the, the business owner's responsibility to, to market themselves and, and, and do good business. So I don't know if the sign necessarily is going to determine if this, this business is successful or not in terms of having, you know, kitchenware or, or whatnot. But um, I'm, I'm fine with the way, the, way it, the way it reads here. Does anyone want to craft a motion? I mean, I can. I uh, do we accept the proposal as put forward. Uh, do we have a second? I'll second it. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Passed unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, the next uh, item on our agenda is another master sign plan amendment. Uh, now, this is an amendment to the um, R&D kitchen. Thank you. Ready for the staff report? What's that? Ready for the staff report? Yes, I am. I was. I thought Sandra was going to do it. So can we have the staff report on the R&D kitchen signage? This, as you noted, a master sign plan amendment at um, Hillstone Restaurant Group, the R&D kitchen. The existing master sign plan is up on the uh, board up there on the far right side, and I'll start from the bottom and work my way to the top, uh, covering the approved signs. Uh, sign one, as it's referred to in the staff report, is the uh, triangular cabinet sign that faces uh, Madison that's on the bottom. It has two faces, the uh, R&D uh, on top, kitchen underscore, uh, those are two faces facing east and west along Madison. Um, the sign up in the upper left-hand corner is a Highway 21 sign, or Highway 29 sign, excuse me. Hmm. And uh, that is a sign that's up for amendment under this application. It's a, um, it's a sign that has 12-inch tall capital letters. Uh, it's, it stands off from the building face of the building by two and a half inches and it has copper, uh, aged copper finish to the letters in an underscore three inches uh, in height. Uh, it's also copper. It's lit, backlit at the base uh, with a wall wash of a neon light at the bottom. Um, the last approved sign faces the courtyard. It's that script sign in the upper right hand corner. It's um, all three, and also there's door signs that are gold letters that are the R&D kitchen kind of below the script. Um, those appear, appear on three of the doors. Of all of those signs, um, those total 33.77 square feet, but the uh, amount that counts towards their their sign limit is 25.77 square feet. Two of the door signs and the script sign that faces the courtyard are not counted um, because they're exempt signs. Uh, they can't be seen from the public way. So what's being proposed is to amend the Highway 29 sign. That's the one up on the, um, on the chimney. It's a stone face chimney. And uh, it's actually reduced, going to be reduced in size from 17 square feet to 6.4 square feet. The height of the letters is being reduced from 12 inches to 8 inches. Uh, the width of the letters are being reduced from 11 um, overall feet to 7 feet. Uh, the one thing that is increasing in size is the underscore. Um, it's almost... Uh, approximately double, not quite, the width of the sign itself. The materials are changing um, from the copper finish to a bronze uh, finish. The depth of the letters are increased to six inches, and they stand off of the wall um, an inch and a half. These uh, letters are hollow and they'll be illuminated by LED lights on the interior. There's a red acrylic lens that's recessed an inch and a half from the face of the letter. Um, so the effect is to have the letters glow 
more than project light. Um, they're consistent with these other Hillstone and Houston signs you see in the photos below that you, um, they have on those, those locations. There's also a similar one on the Embarcadero in San Francisco on their restaurant there. They'll also be more consistent with the triangular, the way that R&D uh, facing Madison, R&D kitchen sign facing Madison is also has the um, red acrylic uh, lenses. That sign will also be on a dimmer. Uh, the lights themselves don't get beyond uh, 78 lumens, which is pretty low. Uh, normal LED light you would find in Home Depot is 200 lumens, somewhere in there. So these, they're, they're not intended to cast a light out. It's just to glow the letters. And it's also on a dimmer so they can adjust the effect. So uh, the materials are changing to, and the letters are deeper, but overall the sign size is smaller, uh, being reduced again from 17 to 6.4 square feet. The underscore will be consistent with the stone used on the fireplace facing, and it uh, projects out eight inches from the building. And that is the change they're proposing right now. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Uh, I do, Bob. Um, on this drawing that we have here, there's an option one and an option two. Could you explain that? <clears throat> right. The option one uh, has the, the edge of, the only difference is at the edge of the letter right. that's, that's facing towards the highway. It is, uh, it doesn't have that, that kind of thickness, uh, return. yeah, return to it, where option two does, and it's it's a slight difference, but it's I think a quarter inch or something um, thicker than just a straight blade coming off of the uh, sign. So which one are they proposing, option one or option two? Well, I I don't know if you. I think they were leaning towards option two the last time I talked to the architect. Yes. We, well, why don't we? Uh, yeah, we could, that any, concludes are there any my more report. Questions of nope. staff yeah. right now. Okay. There's a public hearing, and you can open that, and um, we can. Okay. Make yeah. Me. And um, so, just uh, give us your name and and um, tell us a little bit about the proposal. Sure. Um, my, my name is Tim Kelly, and I work with Hillstone Restaurant Group. I'm the project manager on this project. Um, the, uh, the the Differences between option one or two are, are basically going to be decided during the mock-up phase, most likely. Um, so that's I think we wanted to present both of sure. both of them just to show you kind of what we were thinking. But they're a subtle enough difference where we were hoping a decision could be reached with the information provided. The one that that says Hillstone there is that the one that's in the Embarcadero or no? It's very similar to that. That's actually a smaller sign that's at our Santa Monica location. Oh, okay. Yeah. And does that have the return? The quarter inch return. Yeah, that a, has a thickness or a wall to the right. face of the sign, um, so that would that shows that. And the dimensions might be a little thicker than what we're showing for our option, okay. but it, um, it it I think the intent was to kind of show the direction we wanted to go sure. with the sign, which was more sculptural and dimensional. So, I I, ha I just have an architectural question, and that is. You know, if this ledge is sticking out eight inches like this, the way that this is drawn, and maybe this is just a graphic representation, but, you know, there's some layering of thin pieces there. How's that going to work? Oh, we'll probably brace it against the structure. That's a CMU block structure, and we'll, we'll probably figure out a, a ledger detail that would have um, uh, recessed metal into that or possibly dowel into the stone lintel there. Yeah. So I think uh, that's not shown on this drawing just from a, a sign standpoint. But yeah. we'll certainly it, make sure it's... It doesn't seem like it would have much structural integrity if you're using these little pieces. Well, yeah, as it's drawn, it's not drawn to show the structure. It's drawn to show the intent of the sign. So so you are going to have those little pieces together, like the, the uh, ledges on this drawing here. What do you mean the pieces? Well, if you look at this, it's made out of sort of uh, oh. an ashlar or a pattern of, of small pieces joined together that sticks out eight inches away from the building. I'm just wondering if 
if that's all going to hold together. It, it's, uh, well, the pieces are, yeah, I see what you mean. Um, we're showing kind of the ashlar pattern there. Um, all the stone on the building is a veneer, none of it's structural. So this would, that would be the same case as this. So the, the section that you see there would probably have some structure that then the stone is clad onto. So you buy a piece of steel on a, it, an yeah. angle that you yeah. glue it exactly. essentially top and bottom. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, any other questions of the applicant? None for me. N none for me. Great. Thank you. Okay. So, discussion. Um, does anybody have anything that they'd like to say about this? Um, any comments? Positive or negative or neutral? Well, I guess if we're looking at option A and option B, and you're asking my opinion, I would, I prefer option A, the, the top option, but that's that's my opinion. I, I don't know if that has any bearing on how you end up deciding. You mean the thicker edge? Um, yeah, it's, I, it's this oh, one right here. here. See, this is like, it's just this edge right there. Right? Oh, yeah. Then I, I, I apologize. I was looking at the, the two different, it looks like there's two different signs from that drawing on the on the far right, which I don't have that in my packet. So I, was just, I thought that's what you're referring to. Um, so I don't have any opinion on this thicker edge or not. Bob? I don't. I think it's a excellent project. Yeah, me too. I, I'm I'm excited to see it going up, and I think uh, actually the sign will be really nice there. I think it's probably an improvement over the previous sign, and uh, it's clean. It's it's minimal, but it's going to give you the impact that I think you're looking for. Thank you. You're welcome. We agree. <laughs> Tim, when when might we see that sign going up? Soon, no, um, not. Uh, we're still projecting spring 2013 for an open. So, and we better have the sign done by then. So. Okay. Well, we're thank excited. you. Okay. Do I have a motion? Um, there was one. I, I guess there was one concern the staff had. Is that correct about the lighting? Is that is that a part of your? Report? I think the only you know it. it the only alternative presented is that that edge. Uh, the lighting itself is going to be the LED um, as presented. Um, so it would be if there's a strong preference of the edge, if it has a return or, or it's just plain, that would be the only thing up for decision. Well, I, you know, I think that um, they've done the sign before in various iterations and and I would trust that that you would make the best decision for what you're trying to accomplish and it's such a fine line between the quarter inch on either side and then the the piece of metal coming out um, I would leave it to the applicant to okay to work that and the, the only other thing that may change is that right now these the individual letters are attached to that raceway that in, in turn is fastened to the wall and they're talking about uh, coming up with a more seamless uh, connection to the bottom ledge so you wouldn't, uh, although you're never going to see that raceway at all. So that's, that's not something that's even going to be apparent or you would ever see. So that, that may change, but it's uh, not, not essential to the design of the sign. Yeah. I guess that would, you'd have a water issue maybe with the way that it's presented here. Water getting back there, and if you have this raceway that goes all the way down, I think uh, what I the raceway will be there regardless, and it will be the uh, fastener fastening of the individual letters to the maybe a channel at the bottom of the ledge versus the raceway. Yes, as it's okay. Yeah, I mean it all it gets tricky in the details for sure. But they're only eight and a half inches tall, so you'd have a connection at the bottom. What is that, a couple of inches? Inch and a half? No, that's not it. It looks like an inch and a Maybe half. Maybe an inch and a half. It's probably square, right? Yeah. Well, I think, you know, if the intent is there, from my standpoint, um, how they detail it to be the most effective and seamless, um, I, I I would be fine with that. Uh, any other thoughts on that, or I concur. I concur as well. <laughs> so I'll make a motion to um, 
to pass this uh, sign as as submitted. Um, Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So you've got a sign. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Okay. Presentation and discussion. What do we want to discuss and what do you want to present? There are no items on. Okay. Raise. Um, staff reports. Well, in here we do have the um, election of the chair and the vice chair. And since we have two members absent, I suggest that we hold that over until the September yeah. meeting. I think that's a good idea. So um, I may be absent at the next meeting. Um, I'm not sure where the, the second Tuesday is going to fall. Is that what? Uh, it'll be September 11th. Okay, I'll be gone. You will. But I cannot put my vote in by mail. Well, if you express an interest now, perhaps the other members can consider that okay. in September. So I, I uh, don't want to be considered for either chair or vice chair uh, when the voting occurs. So. I think so. It's time that someone else uh, had a chance to do this. I've okay. enjoyed it. So um, I think that the remaining four or four people should be able to vote amongst themselves. Okay. 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 Any other reports on things going on in town? Well, the um, Heston project will soon pull their permit so you know that the buildings have been raised and there's been site work out there and so shortly you'll probably be seeing some construction activity. Um, any other projects? Um, nothing that's been applied for yet or application made to where we can really tell you definitely they're going forward. A couple of things floating around but no applications yet. Um, let's see the, I guess the Napa Valley Lodge is finishing up. Um, and right. it's kind of Chicho is Chicho. <laughs> I I actually have a question about that. It's it's interesting um, how he got around the market um, identification, keeping the market sign there, which he he did keep the market sign there, but now he's covered it with bunting, and right. I, I don't think it's like specific to a holiday. Yep. I think it might be permanent, so I'm just wondering about that. We're in discussion with him. What's that? We're in discussion with him. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, anything else? Nothing for me. Okay, then we should vote for adjournment. Can I have a motion? I move we adjourn. Can I have a second? Here. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you.